So you can see it's a desktop environment based on KD frameworks and using Qt5. There's no additional configuration because you use the same configuration as the KD framework. So we've got some options here. Let's check these. Yeah, we've got that one. Tagly we've got. So LM sensors we haven't got. Synaptics drive, I haven't installed that because I'm not on the laptop. I haven't got a touch device, but obviously if you've got a keyboard or a laptop with that on, then that's worth installing. So again, this is a an install with multiple packages and it's basically semi-automated. So let's get on with doing LM sensors first of all. Oh right, okay, we need some kernel configuration. Config. So we need loadable module support. Oh, I know we've got that already because we've got... Um, yeah, there it is there. We've got modules loading, bus options, so that's already set, PCI support, device drivers, so it needs I2C support, that's there, I2C device interface, I to see hardware bus support. Configure all of them as modules. Hardware monitoring support. That's down there. Configure all of them as modules. Well, I know for a fact we don't need a lot of these, but let's do what it says. I think as I remember what happens with this you run it it tries to sense what hardware you've got for sensors then it tells you and I think the idea is that you remove the modules that you don't need which is obviously going to be most of them so that is that done Recompile the kernel, so make, so this might take a little while with those extra, those extra modules to build.
Okay, so that didn't take too long. So let's now make modules install, because as it says that's important. Install all those new modules we've created. Now let's push directory to boot and back up our configuration. system.map and finally the kernel so I'll go back pop D and then we copy config into boot config same with system map and same with the kernel And now let's do what it says to reboot. So I'll come out of there and we'll power down. I seem to remember yesterday this didn't work too well. So I'm going to log out and then reboot from here. Log back in, get the desktop manager up. Um, if I change this actually to the KDE isn't here or Plasma is not here, so it just shows it's not installed at the moment. One thing with GNOME, it doesn't seem to remember your session. Um, I've tried putting these on a favourites, but I don't know where the favourites appear. So whether that's more configuration or, or what, I don't know. Okay, so we've done all that now. Uh, let's do LS mod, see what modules we've got installed. So we've got Korg Temp installed, and this thermal one, and it looks like this Dell hardware monitor one as well. And there's also an ECC installed, which is interesting because I'm pretty sure this is only an office PC, office type PC. And there's the SM bus module as well. So let's go into LM sensors and build it. Is there any other options? Only for sensor D which we haven't installed. So that's built this font's gone small isn't it? I don't even remember the font settings so let's make this a little bit bigger. better um, and now let's install it so 
process done. Find out what sensors your system has, you run this following command, and then the appropriate models you have been loaded and summary displayed at the end. Now you know what is needed, and you can compile the kernel to enable just the options you need. So you can deselect the ones that you don't need, basically, is what it's saying. So let's try this. So it's found the core temp. So it's going to try the next thing. And it tells you that things are normally safe and eventually gets to things where it thinks it might lock your machine up. So you got prepared for that. And you can see there's lots of questions. It explains a little bit about what it's doing. So I'm going to do yes to everything. Just in case it might find it. default is set with capital letters so it has found some things now follows a summary of the probes I've just done press enter to continue D wants to generate so it looks like it only found one thing do you want to generate etc it says config LM sensors yes So it looks like that's it. You should now start the LM sensor service to load the required kernel modules. So it says it's an optional daemon. So we're only installing this really for KDE, but um, you can install it as a, a daemon. So let's try running that. Oops running sensors actually so there it's found all the information so things running quite coolly so I think this is the module the sensor and below it is the information um, the only driver it found was this core temp one so it looks like that's the only one we need let's have a look at this oh, okay Oh, I see it's telling me to copy that. That's what it's saying. So, CP. So I left the word two in. That's better. So in theory we should be able to start this demon up now. I was looking for a functions which doesn't exist on this installation obviously so maybe I'll just remove that then. So it seems that the only drive we need is this core temp one, so let's become the root again. Oh, hold on, I'm the root. 
sources Linux. And we're going to device drivers. Um, I2C support. Hardware bus support. I think it's going to be one of these Intel ones. I'm not sure which. Probably that one actually, yeah, I2C one Let's get another tab up. Yeah, I2C one So that is the one. I2C one So basically I want to delete everything else in here then. And then go to the hardware monitoring support. And the only one I want here is the one that says core temp, which again is probably under Intel. I think anyway, because there were other drivers there. There's the one it's using. But I did notice that this was on the list as well when we ran uh, sensors. The uh, see D Dell SMM hardware mon Dell SMM virtual. It did say that you might have to play around just to get it working, so I'm going to remove that for now. Just use the Intel one and see what difference that makes. So it's probably that one, yeah, core temp. What's that one? I five five O. So I get rid of all of these. Uh, it could be that Dell is possibly part of one of these other options. Or it could be that it's built into. ACPI Oh, now that could be one there. That could be that one. That ACPI. So that's worth remembering in case that stops working. Uh, let's just have a flick through here, see if I can see anything to do with Dell. Dell laptop SSM. So it could be that one. Dell SMM. Right, okay, so there may be two others to set in here, so I'll leave just the Intel one in there, because that's the one that the package found. I'll rebuild the kernel. Make modules install. And I'm not going to bother backing up the files this time because there's only some modules we've altered. So I'll just copy the, configure the files and overwrite what's already there. Boot.
Okay, so now let's do sensors. So I've lost the Dell one, but I've still got the ACPI one. So it looks like I do need to add in the Dell option. So device drivers. Hardware monitoring. And just add in this. Clock skew detected that's strange. What's happened there? The time's gone wrong for some reason. It's lost an hour for some reason, I don't know why that is. Oh, I guess I can't change it because I'm not root. Um, Let's set this now. Uh, minus S. S. 15, 20. Right, okay. So let's try. Trouble is, this might try and rebuild a whole lot now. I'm going to have to assume that's built correctly. So to make modules install, just see if that uh, drivers Bluetooth hardware mod doesn't look like it's included that Dell one. So I'll remove it. Oops. And then add it in again. Hopefully, I haven't messed anything else up. Not that one, that one. Oh well, that didn't look much difference. Maybe, maybe it had built okay. I'll do make modules install again. And then cp.config boot config Okay, let's 
Let's try again. For some reason, time's gone back one hour again. So, I'm not sure why that is, whether that's no more or what that is. Uh, so, let's carry on. I'm sure this should be okay now. Yeah, so we've got everything back now, so that Dell module was needed. So that's LM sensors installed, configured and working. So that's section 12. Mark that off. So back to building Plasma 5, looks like we've got all the other dependencies. So let's go into Sources BLFS, KDE 5, clean up LM sensors, and start by downloading the packages we require. Again, there's some here that are commented out just so they don't get installed. Um, things really to do with Grub and booting Plymouth. Uh, I don't know what this nano and phone components is. Or oh, embedded systems. So while that's downloading, I'll open up a new tab. And paste that in. I'll leave that there actually. And they're all downloaded. Let's recreate this shell function. Start off a shell to exit from on an error. And then we've got this big script here to compile all of the applications so we'll come back in a short while to see if that's been successful
Okay, so that's finished installing. Um, yeah, it looks like there wasn't any failures, so that's good. So we just need to exit this shell. And if you did not set KF5 prefix to use a correct symlink to allow display managers to apply to find plasma. So let's do sudo su going to source etc profile to make sure that is set. Oh, have we got the as root? No, we haven't got the as root in this environment. That's okay. I need to configure PAM for plasma. There's a few profiles there. Um, now, as before, we can use a display manager to boot into Plasma. Or um, you can specifically set your XINIT RC file. Um, It's about redirecting error messages from the next session to a log file. Oh, and it says if you intend to start Plasma using the Display Manager, there'll be two entries for Plasma, one for XORG, one for Wayland. Modify the XORG entry with the following command as a root user so you can differentiate between the two. So they've probably got the same name. So let's do that as well. So that should be it completed. Just check there's no stray directories left. No, it's all done cleanly. So what I'm going to do now is to log out of GNOME and see if we can boot into KD5 Plasma. So we've got Plasma. It looks like we've only got one Plasma there. So let's try that one. And that is booting. Yep, it's desktop. It's quite simple, I'm not sure what that is there. I'll show that's new. Um, I can show you now the Yakawaki if I press F12. Oh, right, it hasn't, it hasn't loaded, that's strange. Um, normally that loads straight away. I may have to reinstall it possibly. So if I go to. We've got Dolphin that's appeared here. We've got that installed, so it's quite handy. Yeah, that's working fine. Let's try and find this Yakawaki. Yes, yeah, so this is what happens when you normally run it. It comes up with this little pop-up. And it is working now. So I'm not sure why that didn't work before. Um, let me quit. Let's see if it will work now. Uh, log out. And I'll log back in again. Yeah, that's it. It's running now. So maybe it was because maybe because I quit it before, or maybe it's because I've actually started it in. Yeah, cracky. So if I press F12 now, you can see it just appears. So that is quite a useful thing to have. 
Um, got some notifications here. Okay, that's one that I've seen. The reason we've got the two speakers here is um, there's slightly different functionality. One's the K mixer. You click on that, you get the full window. So this is what we didn't see before the K mix window. So it's a bit like the Windows mixing device. And the other one's just the general quick selection of devices and what applications using what device. So that's why there's two speakers there. Um, the time's gone back to normal, so I reckon that must be GNOME that's doing something wrong. Maybe maybe it's because it wasn't aware of what uh, location I was in. So now I'm just going to check the keyboard. Yeah, my keyboard's set up correctly. Um, I'm going to find console and right click that and add it to the favourites. So I don't have to hunt for it, so it's just added it to the bottom of the list there. So I've got Falcon already. And if I load the console up, um, I'll enlarge the font. I'll have to use Control Plus like it suggests. Let's get this to fill the rest of the screen. So 79, let me just make it a little bit bigger. To make it 80 characters across and 40 characters down, so it's quite a nice size screen. And what I might do is actually modify my X in it so it starts. Oh no, that, yeah, this is still manual, but this makes it start automatic with um, Plasma every time I start, start, start X. So at the moment, when I run Start X or load TWM, but if I leave that as a backup and then modify the run level, um, which can I do that? Or have to, I have to look it up. If we look at the init tab uh, no I think I'll have to sys in it is it that one there oh it's this one in it default I think this is the one hopefully it won't break anything here so I want it to uh, by default go into run level 5 when it starts so I just change it from 3 so basically, um, run level zero is this. Oh, I can't remember what that one is. I know six is the shutdown one. Run level one or S is the single user mode, so there's no networking on that. Run level three is single user or multi user with networking. And five is the graphical. I'm not sure what two and four are, are offhand. But five is the graphical setting. So if I sh uh, save that. If I shut down KDE, I'll just log out at the moment. This normally saves the Windows positions by default. So I'll just test that before I reboot. Yes, it has. The only thing is it hasn't retained the settings. So what I need to do is go to Edit Current Profile, uh, go into Appearance, change the font size. I'm not sure what font size it was now. Um, let's just resize this, see if this is, yes it is the right font size, so hopefully that will have saved, yeah hopefully it will retain that profile. As it's set the default one, so if I log out again, right, 
hasn't, so I need to... Oh, I know what it is. I need to switch the profile. Switch profile 1. That's it. So that should keep that one. Um, I noticed that the... I don't know if it's coming up on the recording. I noticed there's a little bit of flickering. Now, that might be to do with either because of what I'm recording or it may be to do with some driver or some configuration or the compositor needs setting up correctly. Normally, I don't, I normally use this on a machine with an NVIDIA card and there's normally no flickering whatsoever. It's extremely smooth. So maybe some more tweaking to do there. But now I'm going to log out and reboot just to check that this starts in the init5 So it shouldn't ask me to log on at the prompt anymore, the uh, console prompt. It should just come up with that um, welcome screen and ask us to log on there. Yeah, but it's done exactly what it should have done, so that's good. So now I can press enter, log in, and it should take me directly to the um, desktop environment I've selected. Um, I find this default plasma color set a little bit tedious when I'm getting tired because the background's not totally black and the green's not very green. It's a bit wishy-washy, so you can actually change the colors which is what I'm going to do um, see this appearance yes yeah, this breeze format so it's this Linux colors I think is the one I want and it makes the black a lot blacker and the green is a lot greener so it's a bit more a bit more vivid a bit easier on the eye I think That's certainly for me personally So that's the end of the uh, plasma installation anyway. So um, what I'll be doing on the next video is to reinstall the um, remaining applications or, or packages rather that I've got outstanding to rebuild, which is Mesa, Falcon, the browser you can see there and Polkit.